In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this extruded 3D type effect. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. I wasn't actually planning on doing a tutorial on this, as I've done various hacky tutorials on text extrusion before. This is actually part of a more elaborate animation, which I still haven't finished, and I will do a tutorial on, but I posted this on Reddit yesterday, and it got more of a response than expected, so here we are. You can find a link for the free project file below. Okay, let's get started. All right. So if you do download the project file, when you open it, you'll get this. This is the main comp, which is up here. The letters are uh, pre-comp, and I'll walk you through the shadow because that's uh, a bit of a cheat and it depends on the letters. Let's just jump straight into one of the letters. So C, I've actually got the folders here of the letters that I've used. So I've used the, the typeface general black, which you'll need if you want it to look like this. But I've also done one letter using Montserrat typeface, which is, that's free. For those of you who don't like expressions, because the colors are expression controlled in a comp here. But for those of you that aren't a fan of expressions, um, there is a, there's a comp here. Let's look at this one, because this, uh, this is basically how it's done. So we solo the, the layer at the bottom, you'll notice these are all 2D layers, they're not 3D. And uh, let's just solo some of the effects on here. So basically it's Minimax, which is extruding the, the letter. And because that extrudes uh, either horizontally or vertically, or both, in this case, we just want horizontal, but the alpha and the color. I've renamed these, but these, these effects here are just the transforms. If you go distort, transform, and then obviously you can, you can rename it. So here I've just adjusted the rotation to 45, and then the minimax effect, and then here, fix rotate, and that's expression controlled, it's just minus whatever the value is up here. With those three effects, you've got the letter extruding, but because it extrudes in both directions, um, we've got again the transform controls, not transform controls, transform effect, and that is pushing it up, or in this case across, and then up to compensate. So it looks like it's just extruding from the bottom left. In the, if we just jump back to the original C here, if I press U, there's actually just one set of keyframes. So this is probably the one you want to use is it's just controlled with a control now. You've got extrusion and all you have to do is just keyframe extrusion. So the extrusion is just the radius of the minimax effect. This one here has all the keyframes, but yeah, a lot of keyframes. So this is our bottom layer. So that's given us the, the extrusion of the letter. I've used for the stroke, I've used layer styles. Uh, I've got a color overlay for the color and then a stroke for the stroke, obviously. If you just wanted extrusion, you could, if you want, you can just solo these two layers. The change letter here, and I put, I've just put that in green so it stands out. You can change the, the letter to, let's say, a G. Quite a thick font, G doesn't look very good. Let's try A. The extrusion main, to press EE, the source text is just looking for this layer. So you just change the text in one place, which is here change letter here. I'm just gonna control Z those. Yeah, okay. So what makes this a bit trickier is the extrusion lines. We've got one here and where the line goes on this part here is like an arbitrary choice just based on you know what looks right for you. But obviously you do want this line here and if we look at another letter uh, by L, so this one, we we don't have an inside line. We'll look at that in a second. But again, this has just got one extrusion line. That line's using the minimax effect as well. So they're all kind of rigged the same with the same effects. 
you know, the fixed rotate, mini max, etc. So they all work the same way, but it's just how they're stacked on top of each other. So this needs to be, this line here needs to be on top of the extrusion. So if you, if you change your letters and I'm probably not going to crank one for you, just going to let you jump on the project and do it yourself. But in principle, uh, let's go here and I'll, I'll start one, but like I say, I'm not going to do it for you. So A, Montserrat. Okay, so change the letter. Okay, so obviously all the colors are wrong. Okay, we'll look at those in a second. I'm going to turn them off. But the lines, so this is a shape layer and it's got a path with two vertex points, but I bunched them really close together. And that means that this, the stroke of the exterior lines can be expression controlled the same way that the layer style stroke effect is. And you don't have to do it this way. You could, you could duplicate that path, keep it on the same shape layer, but I'm just duplicating the shape layer. It's either or. So it will need a little bit of fixing. It's a bit messy. And then one more there. But that's how you add that's how you add the extrusion lines. So depending on the letter and the colours, <clears throat> again, right, depends how you want the, the letters to look, like star wise. So if we go back to these, you know, whether you know whether this, the inside of the extrusion, is split into two colours, the more variation of colours you add to the extrusion, the more work there'll be in terms of splitting them up. So So that's why having just the extrusion with lines is pretty straightforward. So the colours, what you need to do is just mask them. If we just solo one of them, and they're already matted as well, but if we get rid temporarily of that mat, you'll just see it's the same letter extruding out, but you're just masking off part of it, and there's no stroke. So I'll control Z that because I want the mat in. So knowing where to mask, knowing where to mask it, once you've got your line in place, then that's going to dictate where you mask it. And also what I've done is I've put a cut guide. This sort of helps when you're when you're manually adding vertex points onto your mask. The order that you have these matters as well. So if you've got an inside extrusion, for example here, okay, that is just going to carry on extruding out and then you've got this bit here that you don't necessarily want so I've had to mask off the bottom left of the letter so that green is sort of covering up when it gets past this point that part just requires a bit of thinking about how you how you split it again I'd get behind expressions not use this one is the rule the rule expression controlled in this comp here to a to a slider so you could either use just use this slider to have like uh, like a sort of a bouncy effect but what I've done because the reason for creating this animation partly was to talk about time remapping so I've just time remapped the letters and the good thing about that is you can sort of see the bounce you know, with time remapping, but look out for another tutorial on that. The reflection, if I turn off the, if I just temporarily turn off the reflection here, uh, basically duplicated the letters, and call this shadow, not reflection, shadow. and then flip it on the Y. Moves it down slightly. And for some letters, it works fine. So the C, the O's, that looks okay, but not the L. The L does not work for the L, as you can see. Okay, uh, so I'm actually going to delete those. So you'll notice here, I've just done L for shadow, and 
So once the L was done, I duplicated it, created another one and flipped the L within the comp itself. Did that by adding a text animator and flipped the scale. And I think I had to also adjust the anchor point as well and then just copied and pasted that text animator onto the, the other extrusions. But now once you've got a like a flipped letter, you can duplicate this comp and then paste another character in. So you need a, a flip or say the Y, you can just do that. And it doesn't matter about the colors because it's just for, the, um, just for the shadow. And that's it for the interesting stuff. Anyway, uh, what else? The, the look of the uh, shadow, like I said, stole it from this image here. That's just a um, it's just a pre-comp texture lines here, a line with a stroke and a repeater, and then that's set to 45 degrees as well, and then set that to uh, silhouette luma. Turn that off, and then you've got some textures. Boil using turbulent displays, a little bit of blur. Actually, one more thing just to bear in mind is if we zoom in really close, the strokes aren't completely perfect. Just need to point this out. So, like that edge there is a little bit crisp, and you're also layering strokes on top of each other. So, here you've already got an outline stroke here, and then you're adding kind of another one on top. And then these these lines as well. They're not you can you can change the stroke uh, size here in um, in control here. So if we oh no that's uh, I've expression controlled that to in here. Okay so let's let's see what it looks like here when we change it. So yeah in the master in the master comp you've got uh, radial character stroke. Oh, that's that. That's the effect here. Try those. Yeah. But yeah, so if we drop the stroke to say one. Okay, so it's actually still not too bad. Two. Yeah, so you can see it's a little bit. It's just a little bit thicker on the face, but. You know, once you get to like sort of four, then it starts to look okay. And also you've got all these boil effects as well. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. See you again soon.